Hi, I'm Melissa with Mix in Some Magic. I'm a Disney planning expert and I'm here to mix a little magic into your day. Each week I share Disney vacation planning tips, park strategies, and a little bit of Disney history sprinkled in. Of course, I like to include lots of Disney magic. Join me, let's mix in some magic. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing amazing and having a great week so far. I am getting ready to head to Disneyland to celebrate the Disney 100th anniversary celebration. I'm going to be there when it kicks off to check it all out. And that means I'm trying to do everything before my trip. I don't know why I always do this, but it takes like me going out of town to get little things done around my house. Is that normal? I don't know. I have all these Amazon returns from things that I ordered at Christmas time and I'm going to take them all back tomorrow and return them all, ship them all back. I haven't done it. I've just been putting it off and putting it off. But for some reason, when I go out of town, I feel like I have to do little things like that before I leave. Like it's not going to wait. So really, the only reason a lot of little things get done is because I go out of town so often. So I guess it's a blessing. But then it makes me feel like I'm running around doing everything in the whole world before I can leave to go. Today we are going to be talking all about the Disney 100th anniversary celebration. It kicks off January 27th and it runs the entire year. So I wanted to talk about it because if you're visiting Disneyland in 2023, this is going to affect you. And I know a lot of you are here because you love Disneyland, other people are planning trips, other people are hoping to plan a trip soon. So this will give you an idea of what to expect. If you're visiting during 2023 and maybe if you're still on the fence about visiting in 2023 this might give you a little shove in that direction maybe you'll think yes I have to make this happen I have to visit Disneyland I need to be a part of this Disney 100 celebration so we're gonna talk all about that today and I'm excited there's some fun things happening I've been really diving into lots of details of things that will be taking place and I'm excited to share it all with you today. But first I wanted to read a couple of podcast reviews. I know I say it all the time but I appreciate these reviews so much. So the only way people can find my podcast is when people leave a review. It kind of bumps me up higher on the search so when people search then they see it. So I appreciate it so much guys really are the best. So many awesome comments, so many reviews, and I appreciate it. This one is from Jay Dooley. It says, so much fun. This is a fun podcast. I have learned some fun history about rides like Big Thunder Mountain, and I've learned about experiences that I don't know about, like Pixie Hollow. I'll have to check that out next time I'm at the park. The host is very sweet and pleasant, and she makes me feel like a longtime friend is chatting with me about Disneyland. It's nice to listen to get a quick Disney fix in between my trips to the park. Thank you so much, Jay Dooley. I appreciate it. And I feel like everyone here listening are my friends too, which I know sounds silly, but one of my favorite parts of the week is recording this podcast episode because I feel like I'm hanging out with my friends, even though I'm actually sitting here alone. Well, I'm not alone today. I've got Smokey here under my desk. So Smokey is keeping me company, but usually I'm alone and... It doesn't feel like I am though. Sometimes it does, but sometimes I just feel like I'm sitting here chatting with friends. So I appreciate it so much. Um, Next one comes from kmore17. It says, great podcast, planning a Disney trip, and picked up tons of great tips. Thank you so much for your reviews. I know that it takes time out of your day to leave a review. So when you do, it just makes my day because I know you're busy. I know you have things to do. So when you pause your day for a few minutes to leave a review, oh, it just makes me so happy. I'm so appreciative and it's really a great way to support my little business. So I appreciate it very, very much. 
So I mentioned that I will be heading to Disneyland this weekend, the last weekend of January, for the Disney 100 celebration, but I also have a crazy busy couple of weeks. So I head to the Disney 100 celebration, I'll be there for a few days, and then I fly back home to Utah for three days, and while I'm home, I'll be hosting a Utah Disney fans event So I'm really excited about that. That's happening Thursday, February 2nd. I hope to see you there. If you're a listener and you live in Utah, I hope you're coming. Tickets are at this point all sold out, but I hope, hope, hope that you're coming. So if you didn't get tickets to this event and you live in Utah, plan on coming to the next one because it's going to be so much fun. So I'm going to be hosting that event. And then the next morning, I'm flying back to Disneyland. So the first weekend in February, I'm flying back with my husband for the fastest trip in the world. We kind of just finalized all of this today. We're going to fly, stay two nights. We're going to get in Friday and have dinner, go to bed early because the next day we are one of the creator teams for the gumball rally. Mice Chat hosts a gumball rally and we're going to be one of the teams on the gumball rally. So if you're not sure what the gumball rally is, it's this epic race around Disneyland. It's a big competition. There's all these rules and you're competing to see who can get in the most rides in the shortest amount of time. I think. I've actually never done it before. I only just learned about it last year and it looked like so much fun that I decided this is something I really want to do. So I'm going to be competing in that with my husband and I'm pretty excited. I'm like a little bit nervous. As a creator team, our rules are a little different. We're there to race, but we're also there to help document the experience and take pictures and videos and things like that of the other groups. So we'll be doing that. So I'm kind of torn. Like, do we really jump in there and compete hardcore? Or do we just really enjoy the experience and the day and kind of take it slow, knowing that we're not going to win? I don't know. I really don't know. I think both would be fun. So we'll see. We'll see what we decide to do. But we're going to be competing in that. That will be fun, crazy, awesome. And I will, of course, have a full review of that for you and be documenting all of that over on my Instagram. So you can check that out. And then we'll fly home the next day. So it's a really busy couple of weeks, lots of airports, lots of hotels, and not a lot of sleep is what I foresee in the future. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, of course, I will keep you up to date on all of that. Before we jump right in to all the Disney 100 extravaganza stuff, let's take a really quick break. I'm going to let Smokey out of here because I know he's going to get anxious soon. Got to let him out. And don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. You're listening to Mixin' Some Magic. signed up for my newsletter yet? If not, please do. You're going to want to be part of my newsletter. I don't send out newsletters very often. I wish that I sent out more, but honestly, I don't have my act together enough to send them out frequently, so I don't send them out that often, but when I do, it contains really great and important information that you're going to want to know that will help you along your Disney planning trip path. Or maybe you just love Disney, it'll keep you up to date with current info. Every single month, I do a magic mail giveaway and I pick somebody from my newsletter and I just send them some magic mail. So a little giveaway. If you're signed up for my newsletter, you're automatically entered to win. In January, I'm giving away these really cute pair of Minnie Mouse ears that I picked up at the park. February's giveaway, I'm not sure yet. I think it's going to be some type of Disney 100 merch that I'm going to pick up 
while I'm at Disneyland in the next few days. So if you're not signed up for my newsletter, make sure you sign up. Lots of great information, plus you're entered monthly automatically for really great giveaways. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can check it out. All right, let's get to it and talk about the Disney 100th anniversary celebration that begins January 27th of 2023 and runs for the entire year. So this special event is being held to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. The Disney 100 celebration is a global celebration. It's not just happening at Disneyland, but it mostly is. So there's going to be some decorations and some merch and maybe a few food items at the other Disney parks. But the heart of the celebration is taking place at Disneyland and at Disney California Adventure Park. That's where all the good stuff is happening. So that's what we're going to talk about today is what's happening at Disneyland during the 100th anniversary celebration. And there is quite a lot. There's a new ride, decorations, awesome entertainment, food, of course, special food. Disney does special food items for celebrations really well. And it's no exception for the Disney 100 celebration. If you're hoping to visit, there's still time. We still have the whole year. We just barely started January. So there's still time to book your Disneyland vacation so that you can enjoy the Disney 100 celebration. Make sure, though, if you're booking your trip, that you don't pay full price for your theme park tickets or hotels. My partners at Getaway Today have the very best deals on tickets and hotels. Their customer service is amazing. They even have layaway plans. So if you want to book a vacation but don't want to pay for it all up front, you can make payments. So I'll put a link to them in my show notes or you can call them at 1-855-GETAWAY. Make sure you tell them that Mix and Some Magic sent you because you want the very best deals. And if you happen to be booking a package with park tickets and a hotel room, you can use my code MSM10 to save an extra $10 that's just more churro money. <laughs> we all need some extra churros. All right, one of the biggest things that's happening during the Disney 100 celebration is the opening of the new ride in Toontown. So Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway will be opening in Toontown on January 27th. Now Toontown is closed and has been closed for almost a year for refurbishments. So there's been a little bit of confusion People are like, how can the ride be opening but Toontown is closed? You must be wrong. Well, I'm not wrong. The ride is opening, but Toontown is staying closed until March 8th. My guess is they're just going to have some partitions blocking off Toontown, but leading directly to the attraction. So, attraction is opening on January 27th in just a few days, and it's going to be really great. So if you visited Disney World, you may have ridden on this attraction. They've had it there for a few years, and I've ridden it there a few times, and it's really fun. It's great for all ages, and it's exciting and fun, too. It's not one of those little slow rides that only kids like. Adults are going to like this, too. Grandma and Grandpa will like it. Little kids, everybody loves this attraction. So it's kind of like a, a silly train ride. Here's what it says on the Disneyland website about it. Step into the whimsical universe of a, of Mickey Mouse, of a Mickey Mouse short, sorry, and hitch a ride on Engineer Goofy's train. What could possibly go wrong? Cue hilarious hijinks. A relaxing train ride suddenly turns into a zany, free-ranging romp through ever-changing and rearranging cartoon scenes. You'll quickly learn that anything can happen in this out-of-control animated world. But don't worry, with friends like Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, you're bound to get back on track. All aboard. So it's this train ride and you feel like you're part of the cartoon. It's pretty awesome. We did get word just a few days ago about how we're going to be able to experience this attraction because recently when Disneyland or Disney World has opened new attractions, then they've put a virtual queue in place and that is actually going to be happening as we expected with this attraction. However, 
there's a second way to write it, which makes me really happy. So when Rise of the Resistance came out, they had a virtual queue and that was it. So if you didn't make it into their virtual queue, you didn't get to ride that day, which was really disappointing for a lot of people. A lot of guests were traveling. That was their once in a lifetime Disneyland trip and they weren't able to get into the virtual queue to ride Rise of the Resistance and it made me so sad and there was a lot of sad, sad people. So they've changed things up a little bit and I'm I'm happy about it. So with the virtual queue, you will have two chances to enter the virtual queue each day. So you can enter at 7 a.m. and you do not have to be in the parks yet. So as long as you have a reservation for Disneyland or a park hopper, you can enter or attempt to enter the virtual queue at 7 a.m. from wherever you are using the Disneyland app. Now, if you don't make it into that first queue, you can try again at 1 p.m. If you're trying at 1 p.m., you do need to have your ticket scanned into the park. So you'll need to be inside the park at either park if you have a park hopper. So you just need to make sure that you are actually inside the park, you're scanned in. I mean, you could probably have left and gone back to your hotel. I don't know for sure. I'm guessing yes, but you need to have scanned in for the day. Then you can attempt to get a virtual queue for the 1 p.m. time. So I like that there's two different options, 7 a.m. and 1 p.m., but you can also purchase an individual lightning lane. My guess is they'll be around $25, maybe more to begin with. I'm not sure. Now, it does seem like a lot, and it is when you have a whole family that's attempting to ride, but the reason I like this is because if this is your once-in-a-lifetime Disney trip and that's the ride that you're most excited about, you can purchase a Lightning Lane, plan ahead, just purchase a Lightning Lane if you don't get into the 7 a.m. virtual queue, and then you can ride it. So I like that it gives people options. I wish that they had had that for Rise of the Resistance so that people who really wanted to do that but didn't get into the virtual queue were able to. So eventually down the road, they're gonna have a standby line just like normal, but because this is gonna be a really popular attraction, this virtual queue saves people from waiting in line for four, five, six hours, and will kind of speed up the process. So I will be there documenting how the virtual queue works. I have to tell you though, I am notoriously very bad at getting into virtual queues. I know how to do it, I understand it, I just am not very lucky with it for some reason. I don't know. Maybe my luck will change. Fingers crossed that this is the year that I'm just amazing at virtual queues. I will see. I'll keep you posted. Um, like I mentioned, Mickey's Toontown is opening March 8th. So that is coming up here pretty quickly. And it's going to be same Toontown we know and love, just reimagined. So there's going to be a lot more interactive elements. There's going to be a lot of grassy areas so that you'll be able to let your kids kind of run around and more places to sit and relax. You'll still be able to meet Mickey and his friends there at Mickey's house. But I think it's going to be really great. Plan on spending some time there to enjoy this fun new, not new, but reimagined land if you are visiting Disneyland in 2023 after March 8th. Let's talk about the Disney 100th anniversary decorations because they are pretty amazing. Now, I was pretty thrilled when I started seeing the decorations because they're platinum and purple. Purple is my favorite color. So when you tell me there's going to be purple merchandise all over the park, I get pretty excited. And I'm not even a merchandise person. But when you throw in that purple element to it, I don't know. We'll see, I might, I might be more inclined to buy a bunch of things. So there is going to be a platinum statue of Mickey Mouse in Town Square, as well as a platinum statue of Minnie Mouse in front of Plaza Inn. Along Main Street USA, the lamp posts are decorated with these amazing banners and bunting that feature the three good fairies from Sleeping Beauty as well as the iconic wishing star, the one from Peter Pan, the second star to the right, straight on till morning, that star. Sleeping Beauty's castle, 
looks beautiful. It's adorned with elegant platinum banners and bunting and accented by this amazing, I don't even know what it is, but this amazing feature of the three good fairies who illuminate it with their magic. There's also two water fountains that are going to be on either side of the moat, which I'm really excited about. I hope that the water fountains stick around because I think that's going to be a great addition to the castle and why take out the water fountains after you've put them in. So I hope the water fountains stick around and there's going to be the wishing star on the tower above. One of the towers of the castle will have a wishing star. So I can't wait to check out the castle. It's not just Disneyland that's getting some decorations over in California Adventure. You find an eight foot medallion at the end of Buena Vista Street commemorating the 100th celebration. Carthay Circle has a beautiful backdrop that's perfect for photos and Hollywood Land has some enchanting embellishments inspired by Disney films for the from the past 100 years. So I'm excited to check that out. Plus over at Downtown Disney they've got new banners and botanical displays and there's also a 15 foot Mickey statue at the West End. So you'll want to make sure you get a picture with that. There's some amazing entertainment happening for this celebration. Everyone is pretty excited about that. So we've got two new nighttime spectaculars happening and they're bringing back a favorite parade. So let's talk about Disneyland first. We've got a new nighttime show coming called Wondrous Journeys. Let me read you what it says about Wondrous Journeys. On the Disneyland website it says gaze in wonder as Sleeping Beauty Castle and Main Street USA become a marvelous canvas for 100 years of Walt Disney Animation Studios storytelling thrill as talented artists transform empty pages brimming with possibility into beloved Disney characters and vivid animated worlds wash awash with magic all of this and more is brought to life by soaring music, stunning state-of-the-art projection technology, and on select night sensational pyrotechnics. For over 100 years, Walt Disney Animation Studios has unlocked a special kind of wonder in our lives. These films have inspired us to dream bigger, unleash our spirit of adventure, discover the power within, and realize that it's a kind that it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Wondrous Journeys is an enchanting celebration of the wishers, dreamers, and artists at Walt Disney Animation Studios who have shared their imagination and talents with the world. Okay, so if you caught that, it said some nights would have fireworks, some nights won't. You'll just have to check the Disneyland app for showtimes while you're visiting, but you'll be able to see projections on the castle and on Main Street, and I'm sure on It's a Small World. It's going to be really fun. I love Disneyland projection shows. There's just something magical about it, and I can't wait to check this one out. Over at California Adventure, they're getting a new nighttime show called The World of Color 1. So this is a new World of Color spectacular that I'm excited to check out. Let me read you what it says on the Disneyland website about this new World of Color 1. It takes only a single ripple to make a huge impact. After all, a ripple can generate a wave and a wave can power an ocean of change. Many Disney and Pixar characters have dared to make waves and change their world for the better. In World of Color 1, their stories take center stage, unfolding amid a breathtaking blend of dancing water and incredible special effects. World of Color 1 celebrates the rich storytelling legacy begun by Walt Disney a century ago, bringing to spectacular life moments from favorite films including The Lion King, Moana, Ratatouille, Soul, Star Wars, The Avengers, and more. Come experience the first World of Color to feature characters from Walt Disney Animation Studios, Pixar, Star Wars, and more. I'm excited about World of Color 1. I actually get to attend the first World of Color 1 dessert party. So I'll be there the very first night and I'll get to check out the dessert party. So I'll have lots more information about that after I experience it. I'll tell you if I think it's worth it or not. So for World of Color 1, you can actually join a virtual queue at noon via the Disneyland app. So I recommend you set an alarm on your phone so at noon you can grab a spot. If you're unable to make a reservation, you can still watch it standby. 
I've never had a problem with this. Sometimes I've forgotten. A lot of people just make reservations and then don't show up. So if for some reason you don't get into a virtual queue or you forget, just walk over about 30, 40 minutes to the area and ask a cast member who's nearby if you can watch it standby. They usually say, of course you can. They have you stand over to the side and then once they've got everybody in that has reservations, then they'll let you fill in the available space. So don't stress if you don't get one. There's usually room for standby people, especially on the second show if they're doing two shows for the night. Another thing that is making people super happy is that the Magic Happens Parade is returning February 24th. So this parade ran, I think, just two weeks before Disneyland was shut down due to COVID. I got to see it once. It's a great parade, very fun, and it's really exciting to have it back. Everybody has been on pins and needles wondering when it would come back ever since the park opened, and I think Disney knew that this 100th celebration was coming and this would be the perfect time to bring it back. So let me read you what it says on the Disneyland website about the Magic Happens Parade coming on February 24th. As part of the Disney 100 celebration at Disneyland Resort, celebrate the return of this unforgettable spectacle that reminds us you don't need wings to fly. Shooting stars are for wishes and magic doesn't end at midnight. With a wave of his wand, Mickey Mouse leads a cavalcade of fabulous floats, whimsically costumed performers, and popular Disney pals around the park and into your hearts, all while moving to a high-energy, contemporary musical score that puts a spin on classic Disney hits. In addition, a stirring song co-composed by singer-songwriter Todd Todrick Hall brings some of your favorite Disney tales to life like never before. Watch Moana ride the crest of a beautiful wave in her Voyager canoe, followed by Coco's guitar strumming Miguel, joined by his dog Dante and other fantastical spirit animals, and behold the enchanted forest from Frozen 2 as Anna, Elsa, Olaf, Kristoff, and Sven pass by. The parade's grand finale commemorates the memorable moments from Disney classics in an incredible procession not to be missed. It's a great parade. I know some people aren't parade people, but... I just have to put a plug in for the Disney parade. These parades kind of ruin you for all other parades. You don't want to go sit through your town's parade where they're driving the fire trucks down the street and throwing stale candy at you after you see the Disneyland parades because they are so amazing. So maybe think about making time for the parade, especially this Magic Happens parade because it's pretty amazing couple other things I wanted to mention is that Mickey and his pals will have new festive outfits to help them celebrate the anniversary. And I did mention, but I'll say it again, there's going to be tons of Disney 100th anniversary merchandise, ears, lounge flies, spirit jerseys, hoodies, t-shirts. I mean, anything you can think of, they're going to have it, of course. They don't, Disney doesn't miss an opportunity to sell merchandise. So I'm excited to check all that out for sure. Maybe my favorite, mm, not my favorite, maybe the thing I'm most excited for, how about that, is the Disney 100th anniversary food. So I just got done today making my foodie guide and it turned out really cute. It's maybe the cutest foodie guide I've ever made. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to put it on my website so you can check it out. But there are a lot of good things that I'm excited to try. And I'm excited that the celebration lasts for a whole year because then I have more time to try all the things. And also if there's something I really love, I have time to get it again. So there's lots of lemon things I'm noticing, which makes me happy. I love lemon. Over at um, Hungry Bear, they've got a potato and cheddar cheeseburger, which sounds kind of interesting. They've also got a lemon chiffon pie. Sounds so good. Over at Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe, they have a platinum trifle. They have that at a couple different places. It's layers of chocolate cookie crumbles, cheesecake, cherry compote, chocolate cookie mousse, and some words I can't say. Let's look French. Creme, F-R-A-I-C-H-E. I don't know how you say that. It's creme 
word I can't say, Chantilly, with crunch pearls and chocolate, a chocolate piece. <laughs> I'll see if I can learn how to say that word. Or somebody's, somebody tell me. Um, they've also got a lemon tea cake and a Mr. Bank shortbread tart. This one sounds good to me too. It's caramel and chocolate ganache in a shortbread tart, purple colored, white chocolate mousse, sea salt, edible silver stars, and silver crunch pearls. So that sounds yummy. Over at Refreshment Corner, they've got a violet pretzel, which is my favorite cream cheese pretzel, drizzled with salted vanilla cream and lavender sugar. So I will be trying that one, of course. They've got the Disney 100 churro at a few different churro carts. That's a churro rolled in cherry sugar drizzled with white icing and topped with purple and silver pearls. So that'll be good. They've, of course, got a commemorative tumbler and a lanyard and a popcorn bucket and sippers, all kinds of things. They've got um, this little, what's it called? I just lost it. Oh, glow cube. So you have these little glow cube cubes that light up and you put them in your drink and they kind of flash. And I, I don't know. Some people collect them. I never really get that excited about them. But this one is a wishing star glow cube. And it's pretty cute. And it flashes purple. See what I mean about the purple? Oh, so if you don't know, Peter Pan is my favorite movie. So this idea that they're highlighting the star, the Neverland wishing star, makes me really happy. And the idea that there's a glow cube that's the wishing star and purple, I might have to get that. We'll see. There's also some yummy food over at California Adventure Park. Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta has a French onion dip pizza, which sounds really amazing. It's mozzarella, caramelized onion, and sliced roast beef served with a side of beef au jus. Have you ever thought about dipping your pizza in au jus? Because I have not, but now that I know it's a thing, I want to try that. So that is high on my list. Clarabelle's has a Snicker Sundae, which the picture makes it look really good. It's butter pecan ice cream topped with chocolate shell, caramel sauce, whipped cream, chopped peanuts, and Snickers bar pieces served in a waffle cup. That one sounds really good, although every time I've ever had Snickers and ice cream, I've never really enjoyed it because that caramel gets really hard and then I feel like they're too crunchy. I don't know. I think I'm going to try it for sure but I'm kind of on the fence about how that one's gonna be. Um, there's lots of drink choices. Disney 100 cocktail over at Lamplight Lounge. Magic Key Terrace has a celebration cake. And let's see, Trifle is lots of places. That seems to be popular. I'm going to try that. It's layers of chocolate cookie crumbles, cheesecake, cherry compote. Oh, I already said what the trifle was. That has the word I can't say. So I don't need to repeat repeat it again, the word I can't say. Let's skip that. I already told you what was in the trifle. I'll tell you next week if it's any good. Schmoozies has a Steamboat Willie shake, cookies and cream shake with whipped topping and a chocolate cream filled cookie ears. So it kind of looks like this black and white Mickey Mouse cartoon Steamboat Willie. Um, they've got the Disney 100 churro over it. California Adventure 2 along with the popcorn buckets, sippers, all that kind of stuff. So lots of good food choices. They even have some food choices over at the Disneyland Resort Hotel, over at the Craftsman Grill at the California Adventure. Then they've got Walt's Chili and a Bread Bowl. They've also got a Disney 100 Rice Krispie Treat, which is really cute. So lots of things, lots of options. And I'm hoping I can get try, try as much as possible. But I'm also going to be trying to eat all of the Lunar New Year food too. So I've, I've got my work cut out for me. I am up for the challenge. I will try. I'll do my best. And I will, I will come back and let you know how it all went. So keep an eye on my Instagram. If you want to follow along, there's going to be lots of new things happening and I'm excited to experience it all and take you along with me. So follow along on my Instagram. I put tons of stories, maybe too many, um, when I'm at Disneyland so that you can kind of experience it all. And I love answering your questions. So if you have questions, please send me a DM. 
send me an email at melissa at mixinsomemagic.com. However you want to get a hold of me, Instagram is usually the quickest, but whatever works for you. But let me know how I can help you with your trip and make sure you're following along because this these next couple weeks are going to be pretty awesome. I hope this information was helpful. If you're visiting Disneyland during the 100th celebration, you're going to have an amazing time. If you don't have plans to visit during the 100th celebration yet, think about it because it's not the only amazing thing happening at Disneyland this year. They're, of course, going to have the Halloween celebration, which you know I love so much, the Oogie Boogie Bash. There'll be the holidays at Disneyland coming in November. Those two things are so much fun, and they will be happening in conjunction with the Disney 100 celebration. There's also the Food and Wine Festival that's coming in the spring. Disney loves to host different things, and they really add to the experience of visiting. So if you're on the fence about visiting Disneyland in 2023, think about it. I've got a ton of information about how you can do it for as little money as possible because obviously Disney is an expensive vacation, but it might not be as expensive as you think it is. So I have a link in my show notes. I'll add it for sure all about saving money for your Disney trip and saving money while you're at Disneyland. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have heard me talk about my subscribers. I have a subscription option. It's $4.99 a month and we cover a different topic each and every month. This month in January, we've been talking all about how to do Disney cheaper, how to save for your trip, and how to make it cheaper once you're there because there really are a lot of things you can do to make it cheaper. So I have saved all of those, all that information. I've got lives and little posts and I've saved all of that in the highlight section. So if you're one of my subscribers, you can watch that at any time even if January is over. So whenever you're listening to this, if you think that information would be helpful for you, come and join my subscribers. It's $4.99 a month. You can cancel anytime. You can have access to all of that information and I think it will help you a lot. If you're trying to do Disneyland on the cheap, Disneyland on a budget, I've got a lot of information because I have done Disneyland on a budget so many times and maybe I'm an expert. I don't want to brag but I'm pretty good at Disneyland on a budget. So follow me on Instagram. Come join my subscribers. I'll also put a link in the show notes to some helpful information, but you can do it cheaper than you might think. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have an amazing week. I hope you get everything done on your to-do list. That's my wish for you. be safe give someone a hug tell someone you love them spread some disney magic find a way to spread some disney magic however that looks for you brighten somebody else's day and know that i love you i think you're awesome thanks for being here i will be back next week with something new thanks so much for listening we'll talk soon